please uh, turn with me in your Bibles to First Chronicles, something if you're reading through the Bible with us, you've read recently. First Chronicles chapter 20, our message is entitled, Cut Out of the Bible. I'm going to read the first two verses within your hearing, but I'm going to ask you if you have a pen or a pencil uh, that you make a mark in the middle of this passage, and I'll explain why later. It happened in the spring of the year, at the time kings go out to battle, that Joab led out of the armed forces, led out the armed forces and ravaged the country of the people of Ammon, the Ammonites, and came and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed at Jerusalem. Now, if you have your pencil or pen, make a slash or a mark, draw a line after that sentence. But David stayed at Jerusalem. And now for the rest of these two verses. And Joab defeated Rabbah and overthrew it, Then David took their king's crown from his head, that's the king of the Ammonites, and found it to weigh a talent of gold, and there were precious stones in it. And it was set on David's head. Also he brought out the spoil of the city in great abundance. Let us pray. Lord, I pray for the reading of this scripture, for the preaching of this message, for the hearing of this message, and for the response, both today and once we leave this place. Anoint the speaker for your glory, and anoint ears to hear. In Jesus' name I ask it, amen. Well, I'm going to come back to this text in a few minutes, so leave your Bible open there. Just let me say that... uh, For right now, that there is something missing here. Something has been left out of this story of David's great victory over the Ammonites. And let me say this. I was calculating the other day, and I believe I'm either accurate exactly or very close that this morning would mark my 400th sermon preached in this sanctuary. That's a lot of talking and a lot of listening. And I want to thank you for the privilege of standing behind this sacred desk, and I want to thank you for listening. And if you've been applying it, I want to thank you even more. And I want to thank you for the times when you were nice, when maybe it wasn't as good as it could have been. Thank you. But I can say this, I've always tried to honor the Word of God. To present it clearly and with a sweet spirit. The truth, doctrine, that can set us free. In other words, I have sought to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And I believe I have a scriptural basis for this, both from the Old and the New Testament. Back in the Old Testament, in the law, in Deuteronomy chapter 12, in verse 28, it says, observe and obey all the words which I command you, that it may go well with you and with your children forever. And then A few verses later, in verse 32 of chapter 12, it says, Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. In the New Testament, Jesus himself in John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. I believe he meant keep all of my commandments. When John was an old man, and he was writing out the words that Jesus had spoken to him on the Isle of Patmos in the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22, in verse 14, John says, Blessed are those who do his commandments. And I believe that means all his commandments. 
that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city of heaven. And then I love these two verses located just at the end of the Bible. Revelation 22, 18 and 19, John writes, For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life. I hold this responsibility to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth more seriously than anything in this life. Now, adding to the Bible is another sermon altogether. Don't have time for that today. What I want to address this morning is taking away from God's Word. Cut out of the Bible. This sermon started in me sometime in the spring of the fourth grade. Back in 1964, we took our spring trip to see the home of my hero. We went to Monticello to see and tour the home of Thomas Jefferson. I'd seen it in books. I'd heard about it. I couldn't wait to go. I paid rapt attention to everything they told us. And one thing that the woman told us was, someone said, was Thomas Jefferson a Christian? I don't know whether that was one of my teachers. I can't remember. And the woman said, oh, yes. He loved the Bible so much. She said he sat at that desk and he cut all his favorite parts out and pasted them in a notebook and called it Jefferson's Bible. And she showed us a reproduction. That stayed in my mind. It wasn't until I got to college and began to read that I found out that Thomas Jefferson rejected Jesus as the one Son of God, rejected him as the one Savior, and that at least two times in his life, once at Monticello and later in, uh, as the president in the White House, sat at his desk and took his Bible and cut out all the parts he didn't like. And he was left with a few hundred sayings of Jesus, and he pasted them in a book. That latter was published in his lifetime by the President of the United States. The actual title was not Jefferson's Bible, but The Life and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth Extracted Textually from the Gospel. That means cut out of the Gospel by Thomas Jefferson. What propelled him is what we today call humanism. That is the human mind judging the Word of God. I'll keep this part and I'll dispose of that part. We may not actually go so far as to cut out the parts we like and burn the parts we don't like. While in the White House, Thomas Jefferson left a mess of scriptures on the floor. The entire Old Testament, all the letters of Paul, the book of Revelation with its warning, and had his servant, who was a slave, pick up those parts of the Bible and burn them in the fireplace while he pasted the parts he could live with in his notebook. Whitaker Chambers, some of you older than me, may remember that he was a household name in the 1950s because he exposed atheistic communists who were working undercover in the State Department. Whitaker Chambers wrote in his autobiography that humanism is not a new thing. It's not a 20th century reality, and it goes back further than the 18th century of Thomas Jefferson. It began, Whitaker Chambers writes, in the Garden of Eden. When the serpent said to Eve, don't listen to God, Eat of that tree, and ye shall be as God. 